Hello. How are you guys doing? Happy Halloween. <laughs> Good morning to you. Happy Halloween to you. It's Halloween for you, but it's Halloween Eve for me. Well, kind of. It is uh, like 2.45 in the morning, and um, I went to my meeting tonight, and then afterwards, Tony and I went to dinner, and uh, then I came home, and I was laying on bed in the bed talking to Alex, and I was like, I'm just going to rest my head for like 15 minutes, and then I completely fell asleep. That was at about 11.30. <laughs> I woke up, and I had had, oh my God, like... I don't even know how to how to explain it. It was like a mix between like nightmares and dreams, like really horrible nightmares and really good dreams. Um, but it was crazy. I think honestly, like I was laying in bed um, before he came upstairs, and I was watching a little bit of Haunting of Hill House on my phone. And even though it's not super scary, I don't find it to be super scary. Um, you get very pulled into the story and I think that it's like messing with my head a little bit um, if you've watched it you'll know what I mean like you really feel like you're kind of part of the story after you watch it for a while plus I'm watching it very quick for me like for me to watch an episode or two a day is like pretty quick um, so I have the heat on in here and it's kind of hot 64 degrees outside it's not bad it's um, really nice fall night outside perfect for Halloween. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, and they were talking about, like, moving Halloween to a different, like, where do these decisions get made? They were, like, thinking about moving it to a different day. Um, I'm just like, let trick-or-treating happen the way it's supposed to happen. Um, and then apparently, Tony was telling me at dinner tonight that they're trying to, like, I don't know, change something where trick-or-treating would always be on a Saturday. So, for uh, like parents because a lot of parents have to work and so it's hard for them to take the kids trick or treating and which I mean I understand that but all that kind of makes me sad anyway I had a great day today um, I got up this morning and it was absolutely beautiful all day today it started getting like a little cloudier in the afternoon but for most of the day it was like really like beautiful blue skies outside. I got up, I did my prayers, did my meditations, um, and my daily affirmations, and then I, um, went and got a coffee, and then I came home, and, uh, did not do a face mask today. I keep on saying I'm gonna do one, and then I don't, and then I, um, took a shower and got ready, and then I went and filmed this review video, because, I wanted to um, do my pumpkin versus pumpkin pecan cheesecake review. So yesterday I was driving by this area called Richie Woods. I drive by it almost every day when I'm vlogging. And um, so I drove by it yesterday and the way the sun was hitting the, tr the trees, because it's one of the areas that has um, the leaves have changed the most. It, now, almost all of the trees in Indiana or in Indianapolis have changed, except for right behind our house. <laughs> Which would have been perfect, right? Because then those would have been the... Uh, I could have just gone in the backyard and done it, but our trees haven't changed yet. So, and I thought it was kind of fun because it was like... It, it, it looks in the video like I'm right off the side of the road, but I'm actually, I'm off the side of like a little road. You like turn to go into this nature, whatever that's called. And um, so it's like this little winding road that goes back to like this park area, which apparently is a lot of people park back there and go running or walking or something. I don't know. There's all these couples and families and stuff. And um, I, I never knew anybody was back there. And so I, drove back and I was probably like a hundred feet from where the parking lot was and kind of off to the side and so many people were driving by and walking by and running by and stuff and I just didn't know it was that busy back there. I didn't care. I was like I'm filming my video anyway. So I filmed my video out there and that was really fun and um, came home and uploaded that. started uploading that and then, oh, I went to Walmart and then Costco. And then the Costco parking lot, I filmed a rant video, which is up on my Peter Mon channel. And um, 
then I, tomorrow, since it's Halloween, I don't know that I'm gonna wanna film any videos. I might, we'll just see how I feel when I get up tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to film videos at least today on my channels so I could get them up till tomorrow. And book two, I'm just kind of waiting until November 1st at this point because I have so many videos over there I have to make. I have like four review videos that I have to do on my booktube channel. And then I got today in the mail the new Ransom Rig book, like the publisher sent it to me. This very cool like PR kit kind of thing, um, which is interesting to me. I'm starting to get like PR stuff um, from publishing companies for my booktube channel, which is I think is awesome. I did not love the Ransom Riggs books. They're not my favorite uh, young adult books. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Oh, what are they called? Miss Peregrine's Home, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Um, I listened to the first one on Audible and read it at the same time. Like I had the book and I, so I went back and forth because I wanted to look at the pictures. I didn't love it. It's one of my friends, it's her favorite series of life. I don't know, I just couldn't get into it that much. Um, I think maybe because my expectations were so high for what it was gonna be and it just didn't turn out to be like that. Um, and I never watched the movie, so honestly, maybe I need to watch the movie, and then uh, we started watching it, and I didn't get through it. I got through halfway through it. I think Alex watched the whole thing. Same way with, uh, Oh, Girl on the Train, is that what it's called, by Paula Hawkins? I loved that book, but that movie, I just couldn't get through it all. Um, but Big Little Lies was one of my favorite books of 2017. I read it when we were in Mexico. And I love the series too. Leanne Moyerty um, is just a fantastic writer. I have all of her books and I haven't read. I've, I've been reading The Husband's Secret off and on for like the last year. Um, but Big Little Lies is, is it? Let me set, make sure. Um, I think it's the only one. I've got Truly Madly Guilty. I didn't finish that. I didn't really even start it. I think I read like a paragraph of it. Um, so she has a new one coming out this next week. Tanya told me tonight. It's called Nine People's Lives or something like that. She's such a fantastic writer. If you're looking for a, a new good book, she's that will probably be it. So I'm excited about that coming out. Um, and then... Oh, so Alex called then. He's like, do you need me to pick up PP's medicine? I was like, no, I'm going to get it. Or I just got it. And so, okay, I filmed the review video. Then I filmed the rant video. And then um, I came home and I started uploading those. And then I filmed a Peterisms video, which is actually sitting right now at home on the computer up. My plan had been when I came back from going to my meeting tonight that I was going to post it then. And I completely forgot about it. So <laughs> until... I was just walking out the door right now. So I um, will post that tomorrow. It's actually, um, I read two meditations and they were both really, really good. So that will be up tomorrow. And um, it's, I think I titled it, Are You Valuable? Um, and it's mostly about our belief systems of like who we believe we are inside and things like that. And then Alex came home and I hung out with him for a little bit. And then um, I left to go to my meeting and I picked up Tanya and then we got to the meeting um, and the inevitable the, the inevitable happened <laughs> the one thing I have been surprised in over two and a half years of being on YouTube that hadn't it's never happened um, it, or has it like maybe one other time but uh I was, so in the meeting that I go to on Tuesday nights, my home group, we, um, and I asked her if I could tell this story and she was like, yeah, absolutely. She was like, uh, you could tag my name. You could put my name. I don't really care. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not ashamed to be part of the wolf pack. So, uh, but I, um, so the group that I go to, there's like probably 40 or 50 people. And then we go off and we count in numbers like one, two, three, four. And then we, def we mix up into like four groups plus beginners group. So I was sitting in the circle. I was in threes tonight with Tanya. And um, one of my good friends, she and this other woman started walking towards our group. And I was sitting there and when this, and you know, I always introduce myself to like the newest person. I've never, I've never seen her before. So I stood up to introduce myself to her. And so did Tanya. And she came like right for me and she goes, I love you so fucking much. And I was like, I 
go, excuse me? I started laughing. I was like, I go, do we, do we know, do I know you? And she was like, oh my God. She was like, I know you from your videos and social media. She goes, I love you so much. And I was like, oh my God. So anyway, um, she was so sweet. We stood there just for like a minute and talked because the meeting was starting and, um, had a great meeting. And, um, so after the meeting, like she came up to me, we were like, cause there was only like, you know, nine or 10 people in our little small group. Got not even that many, probably eight people. And so she was in my little small group. And so afterwards she was like, I love you even more now. <laughs> she was so sweet. And, um, she was like, and so I was like, oh my God, I don't even know what to say. And she was like, you just make me so happy. And she's like, your videos, made she was such a cool lady. So anyway, um, she was like, can I tell my daughter that I saw you here? And can I, you know, I was like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't care. I mean, I talk about being sober all the time. I said, the only thing I care about is to please don't talk about what I shared. And obviously cause it's private. And I said, and please don't share, you know, the program because of the traditions. And she was like, oh no, no, not at all. So she's like, can I get a picture with you? And I'm like, sure and the picture that we took was like up against the wall like in this church and i was like make sure you take it so that there aren't any other people around because we don't want to violate anybody else's anonymity and she's like oh yeah 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 and so we took a picture of it and she's like can we facetime my daughter and i was like um <laughs> okay like i'm at a meeting and i really didn't care i just didn't you know and it was so funny because some of like my friends were walking by and they were getting such a kick out of it they thought it was absolutely hilarious because they don't you know like they don't even know most of them that I make videos or whatever and um she was so down to earth like I don't know like it was just such a great meeting tonight and her share and I, I it just there was a guy in the meeting that just you know I was talking last night about um how like I can hear somebody's story in a meeting and it can change me profoundly like I don't know that I got changed profoundly, but this guy tonight, when he, what he shared in the meeting, really changed my outlook on a lot of things, you know, and my perspective on a lot of things. So anyway, um, so I was like, yeah, sure, just FaceTime her. So she FaceTimed her daughter. Um, she's like, my daughter and I, we watch you every day. We love you. And um, her daughter's like a freshman in high school or something. So she FaceTimed her and I was like standing there with her mom. And she was like, when it when the FaceTime thing came up, she was like, she looked at me and she goes, oh my God, like that. And I go, boost. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> she was so sweet. It was so cute. Um. I don't know, it's weird to me that anybody would ever get that kind of reaction from me, so it's cool. But anyway, she and I stood outside and talked for, I don't know, a good half an hour and um, talked to some of the other, like, you know, people that were there. And she was so nice. She was so gracious and um, really, like, I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff. We talked to program stuff and so anyway. She gave, actually gave me a lot of good suggestions of some meetings that she goes to because I want to try some new meetings and um, so. Yep. I need to buy some more of this, you guys. So uh, then Tanya and I afterwards, Tanya was so hungry that um, we were like trying to find some place to go, but we didn't leave. The meeting gets over at nine. This is how long we stood out there and talked. We didn't leave until like 9.40. And um, it was actually 9.41 because I looked at my uh, phone. And so I, um, I was like, well, where do you want to go? So we were like Google searching places to look up their hours. And the only place around that was open, uh, <laughs> this woman today, she was so funny. She was like, and then every time somebody from Indianapolis talk, like stops me, and they're all, they always say the same thing, which I think is so adorable. They're always like, oh my God, we were going to come to where you eat brunch on Sunday and we were going to stalk you, but we didn't want you to feel bad. And I was like, come say hi. I think that would be so sweet. I wouldn't think that's stalking at all. Like, I think that would be sweet you know so anyway um, but uh, we 
we went to Applebee's because it was like literally the only place by where our meeting is at that was still open. And I was like, Tanya's like, well, can, is there anything that, for you to get there? And this was the hardship that I had when I was a vegetarian before. And uh, like, it's really not that hard in Indianapolis anymore because restaurants are so different. Excuse me. Restaurants are so different than they used to be. And, um, You know, back in the day, the best you could do was get a dinner salad or whatever. I mean, most restaurants that were chain restaurants back in the day had no vegetarian options. And um, I think most restaurants today, especially I think a chain like Applebee's or, you know, whatever, one of those like Charleston's, which I love as well, or whatever. I think most chain restaurants, I'm not talking fast food, I'm talking like sit down dinner. I think should have like two vegetarian options and two gluten-free op options of which gluten doesn't, I mean, I don't know that maybe I'm affected by gluten, but it doesn't, I, I, I'm not aware of it if it does. Um, I just don't understand why they wouldn't have those on there. And maybe Applebee's does have the gluten-free options, but they sure as hell don't have vegetarian options. And um, so, we went in there and Tanya's like, are you sure there's gonna be something here you can get? And I was like, yeah, every place has a grilled cheese. Like, when in doubt, get a grilled cheese, but usually they have pasta, they have, you know, a salad or whatever. Well, literally, all their salads have chicken or this in it or that in it. And basically, if you don't get that in there, it's not, like, really much of a meal. They didn't have a grilled cheese. <laughs> I was so hungry. They uh, didn't have, um, like, all their pastas had meat in them. <laughs> Um, all their pastas had meat in it. One of them had like pork loin or pork rib or something in it. I was like, in a salad, like, or in a pasta, this is crazy. So anyway, um, and so I, I don't even know what Tanya got now. She got, what'd she get? She got like a steak. No, she got fish and, um, she got like some kind of fish. But not like uh, fish fish. It was like, you know, fish and chips. It was like that. But she replaced the chips with um, a baked potato. And I got the macaroni and cheese with no chick. Uh, it had like chicken tenders on top of it with no chicken on it. And just more macaroni and cheese. Uh, and then I got a side salad to start. So the woman was so nice. And um, she came out. And I, she looked like, she didn't even know how to tell me, but she had like this bowl of macaroni and cheese and she's like, I am so sorry. And I was like, what? Applebee's must just have their stuff in the back and they just warm it up, honestly. I don't, do they not have a cook at Applebee's? Because she looked at me and she goes, I am so sorry. She was like, I forgot that our macaroni and cheese has bacon in it and they can't take it out. And I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, do you, is there anything else that I can get for you? Like, as if I was just going to sit there and not eat, you know. And um, I was like, well, and she goes, I could do the fettuccine alfredo and just take, take the ch chicken out of it. And I was like, and the one reason I didn't want it was because it looked like it had this, like, big, fresh broccoli in it, which I like broccoli just fine. I just didn't want it to be, like, overpowering, you know. And um, I was really, let me just say this, I was really hungry. So, anyway, so she, uh... My allergies are kicking in tonight. So she, uh, so I was like, yeah, that's fine. So she goes, okay. So she was really sweet. She gave me a 10% discount and everything because we had to like wait for that to be made. So she brought the fettuccine out and um, it was so good. Let me just tell you, if you go to Applebee's, which I, I used to love Applebee's back in the day when I could eat meat because I love their sandwiches and I think their cheeseburgers are really good. I'm not a big fan of their fries. I don't love their fries. There's like, they're kind of like, uh, they have a lot of seasoning on them or something. I don't remember what it was. I just didn't like their fries, I remember. Um, but the fettuccine, oh my God, God, was so good. And the broccoli was part of what made it the best. I couldn't even believe it. God, it's kind of warm in here. I have the heat off and everything. Um, so I was happy that I tried that. It was good. See? Gotta float with the river. Some things are, just happen the way they're supposed to. Oh, when she brought the macaroni and cheese out, I can remember, uh, or I looked at it, I can remember, it just happened like, you know, a couple hours ago. I looked at it and I thought to myself, well, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to eat that because there really wasn't any extra mac. Because I was like, since I'm not getting the chicken, can I get like extra mac and cheese? And she was like, oh yeah. 
and if there was extra, I can't imagine what it looked like to begin with. And um, it did not look very appetizing, bacon or no bacon. It just didn't look that good. We used to always get, back in the day, the blondie dessert. Alex and I, like, our first couple years that we were together, like, when we were really, like, watching, like, how much money we were spending when we went places to eat and stuff. Well, when we started trying to cut down the expense of how much we were spending on food, we would do, like, Applebee's was one of the places that we went pretty regularly. Oh, my God, I didn't realize I was low on gas. Um, and we would go, because they had the two for 20, and they still have the two for 20. I saw it tonight. And it's basically where you get, like, an appetizer to share, and two, I think an appetizer or two appetizers or something, I don't know, and two entrees for $20, and then we would just get waters, and so our whole meal would come to $20, which was a pretty fantastic deal, honestly, you know. They have really good appetizers there, too, but way before that, I used to get the Blondie um, brownie, and then it, they would put a scoop of vanilla ice cream on it. Oh, my God, it was so good. So that was my day. I had a really good day today. Watch a little bit of The Haunting of Hill House at home. And um, I think I'm on the seventh episode because I just finished that. Man, if you've watched it, and I'm going to do a whole review on my review channel, but if you've watched it, the episode when they are in the funeral home and all of them are standing around like arguing and stuff, whoo! So I hope your family, if you've got a big family, doesn't fight like that. But sometimes I'm thankful that I have a small family because we just, our family never argued like that. Um, I mean, collectively, I don't even think we had that many things to argue about, you know. But Alex's family is big and they don't ever argue, you know, hardly ever. So I don't know. Maybe it doesn't have to do with the size of the family. Um, I am loving, loving, loving doing my review channel. I'm having so much fun on it. Um, I'm, I, it's just such a fun, happy channel to talk about and do stuff on. And... Um, It's so fun just to come up with stuff. And the more I've been doing it, the more I realize there's like so many things that I could do on that channel. Like I just like every day, like when I'm driving around, I'm like, oh, I could do this or oh, I could do that. And I really do think that it'll get to a point where it's a daily channel. Um, Cause so far this week, I posted a video yesterday. I did my making a murder review on there yesterday. And today I posted the cheesecake video. And I don't have another video. Well, the Haunting of Hill House will happen sometime this week whenever I finish the series. But I don't have another video um, right now. I'm just gonna stop this now, I'm at 23 minutes. Um, I don't have another review video. Although when I walked out to the garage uh, today, all that stuff was staring at me that I bought to review. I think like some of the other, like some of the stuff, like the as seen on TV stuff or the Shark Tank stuff. I know this is gonna sound silly, but it kind of scares me <laughs> to have to review that. I don't know. I just know that like a lot of people do those kind of reviews on YouTube and like I don't want to do stupid I don't know I don't know why it makes me nervous I'm like okay Peter I mean one of the reasons that I started that channel was because I just love to try stuff right and I always thought well I'm no different than anybody else so I can try this stuff like everybody else right and um that's why I started it you know Alex earlier, he was like, are you crying? I was like, no. He go, I said, why? And he goes, because you're sniffling. I said, my allergies are driving me crazy today. So many people uh, yesterday, on yesterday's vlog, commented about how they really like enjoyed what I was talking about last night or related to what I was talking about, you know, and, um,
so thank you for that comment. Um, those comments. They really lift me up. I think like, you know, I'm like reading through the comments. I was like trying to think about if I even want to talk about this on here tonight, which I don't even know that I do, but like somebody commented on there and their comment was, it was nicely stated, but they were like, I really wish that you would make a video going in and explaining everything that happened and, um, you know, everything that like your part or taking responsibility or whatever. And like, I feel like Uh, the one reason that I haven't, and I know this won't make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but is number one, I don't know fully how I would say what I feel like I want to say, if that makes sense. Number two, on some of the stuff, it's doesn't matter. Um, it's inaccurate. I've already addressed it on here and people are going to believe what they want to believe. And third with like the friendships. I'm, I'm just not going to go there. There are so many, like, in, in this video that was made about me, you know, there were so many inaccurate statements about my interactions with people. Um, even people that she knows closely, that she doesn't know the background story to. So, like, I'm just done. I'm, like, ready just to move on. And if people don't, like, you know, it's like what my sponsor said to me. She said, you know, I said, would you, how would you address it? And she said, I wouldn't. That's between me and God, and I know the truth. And I'm kind of there, like I said the other night, like, no matter if I take a loss or not. You know, in regards to any of the tweets that I put out there, I'm so, like... <laughs> embarrassed by them, ashamed of them, but I'm not going to live in embarrassment and shame, you know, for the rest of my life. I'm just not. And, you know, there was this guy in my meeting tonight. This was the guy that, like, really, like, he was talking about something that, it, it's not, it's his story and I'm not going to share it, but, um, like, on a level that was so bigger than all of this, and he's, like, newer in recovery. He's, like, I think he said he's going to have 90 days, something like that next week. And, um, he said, you know, like, in regards to, we were talking about the fourth step, and he said, the the thing for me was, and the fourth step is made a search and for fearless moral inventory of our lives, which is interesting because in The Haunting of Hill House, they talk a lot about the fourth step. And um, he said, you know, for me, he goes, I think that part of my fear was taking a look at these things that I had done in my past. He was like, but it also gave me inventory, which I've done a shit ton of inventory in the last month. He said, you know, inventory gave me freedom from these things because I'm not that person today. And if there are traits of mine that are still existent, I need to take a look at that and grow as a person. And this program gives me the opportunity to change. He goes, but I don't believe that anybody deserves to be shamed or blamed for the rest of their life on actions from their past. And I absolutely 100% agree with that. That being said, there are a lot of people that don't agree with that. And I'm not going to change their opinions about things. You know, I've said literally on, I think, this channel and my other channel that I know they're messy as fuck and I'm embarrassed of them. I'm not going to go in and excuse them away. I'm not going to sit there and go, well, at that time this or at that. No, there's, I sh they shouldn't have been put out there. I know that. Now, some of them, to be honest with you, I don't think are that big of a deal compared to the others. You know, I understand why some people are upset with some. But the other thing is, is that if I go in and I say, okay, I'm going to address all of this stuff, uh, all of the things about my career that are absolutely inaccurate, okay? Completely inaccurate. And um, I was sitting tonight talking because the, the woman that brought her to this meeting, because she had no idea I was going to be at this meeting, but the woman that brought her, why is it so hot in this car? The woman that brought her has, like, known me from the field for a very long time. And she knew I did YouTube, but she didn't really understand it. So I was kind of talking to this woman a little bit about everything that's been going on. And my friend was like, that is ridiculous. Like, she's like, and and, she, and I said, yeah, and I don't know if I address it or not. She goes, I would never address that. She goes, that is absolutely ridiculous that you have to deal with that. She's like, who can cox that kind of stuff? 
She's like, Peter, that has so much more, that says so much more about other stuff than it does about you. She goes, I would not address that whatsoever. And so, like, you know, for me, it's like, okay, I'm not going to address that. And then if I get on and I address this thing, then everybody's going to be like, why aren't you addressing this? And why aren't you talking about that? Blah, 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 whatever. So, it's like, and even if I got on there and I addressed every single thing, people would still say, well, you're a liar. Or, you know, I don't believe you. Or whatever. So, I, then I have to check my motives. Why am I doing it? Am I doing it because I feel like I owe somebody an answer? Well, I didn't do anything that I feel like I owe somebody an answer, you know? Just because other people have made it out to look a certain way does not mean that I owe anything to somebody else. Are there things that I have done, like the tweets? Yes, and I don't have a problem at all sitting on video and owning that shit and saying, you know what? Like, I, I think it's, it's ugly. I'm not proud of who that I, I was, whether, you know, whenever those tweets came out. But for me, I also have to allow myself to move on and, like, really check myself. Like, but is that who you are today? You know, is that still there? And that's where the inventory piece comes in for me. The rest of it, like, I'm not gonna, I mean, Part of the reason why I'm not gonna talk about the friendships on YouTube is because, first of all, I've really realized the limitations of an online friendship, if that makes sense, since all this happened. Number two, for me to get on video, I would have to talk about our friendships in context. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to start nitpicking friendships, okay? Number three, I ain't begging nobody to be my friend. If somebody doesn't wanna be my friend, you know, I've gone there at times in my life before and begged people and been like, and not begged them, like, please be my friend, but been like, please talk to me. I'm really sorry, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Can we, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not, you know. There are people out there that I wished I would have worked a little harder to stick around in my life, not on YouTube. I'm talking about off YouTube in my personal life. And there are people in, um, that I, I gave way too much attention to trying to keep them around that I shouldn't have been working that hard. And, you know, at 46 years old, one thing that comes with a little bit of age, I think, is you start to decipher some of that stuff, you know? And if somebody really has a huge problem with you and they don't really want you in their life, it's like, I get, I get it. I respect that. You know what I mean? Like, okay. It's not healthy for me to continue to fight and resist on a daily basis. And so at some point, and you have to understand for me too, okay, surrender is a sign of strength. So when I go, here I am, this is who I am. If, if you believe me, okay, great. Like, thank you for continuing to support me. If you don't, I, I sorry, I hope down the road, you know, that maybe you'll come back in and check. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's I've never crossed this road before. So I don't know what to say about all of it. Um, me getting on video and talking about all of it anytime soon is probably not going to happen. At least not until I have more clarity with it. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to get on video anymore. And this is really where I've changed a lot in my responding versus and reacting, which is something I've really, really worked hard on is that until I have a better idea, like I feel better about a situation or I feel better like knowing, like I can see the whole picture for what it is and then make an educated like response of like, okay, like this is where I'm at today and this is what I've learned and whatever. I'm not gonna get on video and do that because it'll just be bullshit and I'm not gonna do that, you know? You know, if people don't like that answer. I, I totally understand that. You know, somebody commented on my vlog today. Well, they had commented actually on a couple vlogs and they said, um, you know, um, I came here and thought I was gonna find this like Disney villain 
and I stuck around because I really enjoyed what he had to say, which uh, this comment meant a lot to me. And the thing is, is that like I am not proud of the tweets whatsoever. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. I'm not proud of that whatsoever. And I've really taken a strong look in the last month at the way I speak to people. Not just on, you know, Twitter, but in social media. <coughs> in my personal life. <coughs> on and on and on. And done a lot of inventory on that. And what I have found is that by and large, and this isn't just me going, oh, well, I think I talk nice to people. This is me looking at several different relationships and doing inventory on it. From their perception, from their perspective and mine. You know that I'm probably a little direct. Um, I think that I become aggressive when I feel like I'm backed into a corner sometimes. I'm highly emotional and those are all things that don't translate well on social media and those are things that I need to take a look at, you know? Um, I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. The sneezes caught me, by, caught me off guard. Um, but I saying? I totally don't even remember what I was saying now. Um, I just, I, like, this is the thing. I don't want the vlogs to be about all this. You know what I mean? And I feel like people over here kind of want to hear about it. But like, I was talking to this woman tonight. She's like, I would never address it. She's like, that's not why. I started asking her about other drama channels. She's like, I don't even know who these people are that you're talking to me about. She's like, I watch you because, you know, of you. Like, I found you through, like, some makeup video you did. And, um... And I think, like, that's not my perception sometimes. And I think that everybody, like, watches all of this unfold. Oh, I know. I was talking about this comment that I got about the Disney villain thing, you know? And part of the thing is, for me, it's like... I see people tweet shit out on a daily basis that I'm seriously, like, I look at it and I think to myself, I mean, today, October 30th, right? I look at that and I think to myself, if I tweeted that out today, I literally, I literally, people would come for me, right? But, like, the entire time that I've been on YouTube, um, you know, like, these tweets have been out there. I didn't remember that they were out there. I'm not proud that they were out there. But what people saw of me on YouTube wasn't fake because those were from years ago. Like, okay, I didn't remember that they were there. I'm not proud of them. But it wasn't like who I was being was fake, you know? Like, a lot of the relationships that I have had with other people, some of the things that people don't know is that like, I've attempted to mend those things. I've attempted to take responsibility behind the scenes, you know? And not and not welcome to do that without the other person ever trying to do that. You know, I mean, this is not just one person or two people. This is several people, right? And, um, or what was leading up to that or what was behind it. You know, these are things that, and a lot of these things are things that have been out there for some time now. So for me, you know, and then the career stuff is just bullshit. So I, I'm not, I won't go there. Um, and for me, it's like, imagine waking up and then all of this exposed and I'm like exposed. Well, this is all stuff that I put out there in live streams and, you know, on YouTube. My Twitter's been open all this time because back when I was tweeting these things out, my, my Twitter was not. And it was a different name on my Twitter back then and people couldn't find me by my name. And um, not that that makes a difference. It doesn't. But, you know, it's like...
I don't know. The thing that's hardest for me is like people are like, oh, you're so changed, you're so different, and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm l literally no no different of a person than I was six months ago. And this person took all of these, you know, or these people have taken all of these ugly things and turned it into this way of how I'm supposed to look, which I'm not that person at all, you know? I mean, imagine if, just imagine this for a second, okay? If somebody... Like, I mean, I think if you're not on YouTube, it's hard to conceptualize this. But imagine if you woke up tomorrow, right? And somebody took, let's say, the 10 worst moments of the last two years of your life, you know? Like, they caught you in the middle of, like, a very heated conversation or this or that. And this is where sometimes I'm too old for this shit, right? I just am. And, you know, people will say, well, he used to be a counselor. He should know better. Well, I guess counselors aren't allowed to get angry, too, when they're being lied about. I've seen a lot of irate counselors in my time, okay? I didn't know that a master's degree meant you weren't allowed to feel anger anymore as a person. I was not aware of that, um, you know? But, whatever. So, you know, imagine if somebody took, like, the ten worst moments of your life and then, like, it's like you couldn't dispute it because you really had said and done those things, right? No matter how small of the clip of your life it was shown or how it, you couldn't dispute it because it was the truth, it, it, you know? You could call that manipulative to say that they were manipulating the way that it was seen, but was it or were you really that angry in that moment, you know? And for me, I was pretty angry in some moments, you know? And um, I don't know, it's just like, that's hard. It's really hard. And then followed by all of these nasty comments and of people that, you know, really used to like you. And then now, because they've been shown something which isn't even to be true of who you are as a person. You know, like the thing that's baffling to me is, you know, I've had the same best friend for 22 years, right? Now, let's just talk about this for a second. If I was the person that I'm being painted out to be, she would have to be a really, this mother, okay? This mother, wife, business owner, dog lover, on and on and on, okay? Would have to be a really nasty human being to stand by me as my best friend for 22 years and just endure all of this that I put out there in the world. You know, my husband of 10 years plus. You know, my family. Like, how could they possibly tolerate all that? Well, because it's not true. And the majority of the people that are passing judgment on me are people that will never meet me in real life. And I can't defend myself, and I know that, you know? Partly because a lot of the shit that I put out there, I know looks ugly. I know that. I get it. I got on video twice and I tried to explain things. I'm not gonna get on video anymore. It doesn't need any explaining. It was ugly. I'm not proud of it. If I ever feel like I really need to do it at some point, I will. But right now is not the time for me, you know? Um, this has been some hard shit that I've gone through. You know, Tanya said something in the meeting tonight. I know she said it to me afterwards when we were in the car. She was like, you know, she's like, no matter what we go through in our lives, wrong or right, she's like, the stuff is still hard. You know, she's like holding my hand. And I was just like, I'm not a victim in any of this. Like, I've done, I've put a lot out there. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I so believe in forgiveness of others and I so believe in second, third, and fifth chances. Actually, you know, it's interesting to me. Somebody messaged me the other day and they said that they were going through like a really hard time with like, I think it was a family member. And they were like, um, you know, you always say in your videos that you believe in second, third, fifth, ninth chances, you know, but I've been through this like two or three times and I don't know how to give this person any more chances. Like, how do you give somebody so many chances? Um, I'm not saying that it's easy. And I think with some people, 
and I understand myself included. I think with some people, when you see it for what it is, you have to be like, okay, this is where I set the boundary, right? And I think that as you get older, we learn to set boundaries quicker with people. But there are a lot of people in my life, honestly, especially if they showed that they were open to growth and learning, that I don't think they got it the first time. I don't think they got it the second time. I. There's a lot of things in my own life that I didn't get the first, second, or third time that it took me. I mean, hell, I went through treatment five times before I got sober. Five times. Thank God people didn't give up on me in the first or second time. You know? They about did. So, if I want people to give me second, third, fourth, sixth, eighth chances, because we're humans and we're going to foul up, then I have to give other people those chances as well. You know, I have to treat people the way that I want to be treated. And that's what I try to do today in my life, you know? I try to treat people the way that I would like to be treated. Do I fall short of that at times? Absolutely. Do I take a look at that? Absolutely. So, okay. Let's move on to something a little bit more fun. If I hadn't talked about this for so long, honestly, I probably would just go back and talk about something else instead because I uh, I know that most of you really don't want to hear it and don't really care. And, and the thing is, is that I'm not at a point anymore where like I wake up every day and I'm just like stressed out over, over it, you know, um, at all. Like, some days are better than others with, like, it depends really a lot on kind of, I don't know, A, how I'm feeling just that day in general, and B, like, you know, I don't know, it just depends. And so, but, you know, starting my day with the prayers and the affirmations and, you know, the meditations has been really, really healthy for me because it's really helped me um, get centered before I start my day and then anything that comes that way, you know, which I think is valuable for anything in life, you know, not just, what turned off, not just being like a YouTuber of the world, you know, so anyway, it is so hot in this car tonight, I don't know why, it's Halloween Eve, so to just end that up really quick, I understand that people want me to make a video, I understand that they want me to address all these things, um, You know, at the end of the day, and I know that there are a lot of people that have invested a lot of time and energy in watching my videos, and I appreciate that. And for those people, maybe down the road, I will post that video. That being said, right now, for me, to even continue to be able to post videos on YouTube or, you know, get excited on a daily basis, I have to take care of myself. Uh, that's important. I, can't, I don't have anything to give anybody else if I'm not taking care of myself. And to take care of myself right now means I need to put one foot in front of the other and move forward. I cannot continue to live in this for the next year. I just can't, you know? And... Um, my hope for others is that you don't have to go through what I went through, but if you do, you know, maybe look at it as an opportunity for growth and an opportunity for learning because even on my hardest days, I've called my sponsor and that's what she's reminded me. This is an opportunity for growth, right? And the other thing is I'm not a victim in this. I'm just not, you know? I put some shit out there in the world that came to bite me in the ass. It's not the first time and it won't be the last. Um... I think it's harder because it's on a public forum, so it's very humbling. Um, but you know, maybe I needed that. I don't know. I will say this, that like, I talk about it on here, and then people are like, still on here, they're like, well, you never really talked about it. So next time somebody brings it up, can you just remind them in the comments, like he went and talked about it on such and such day, October 30th or whatever, and then, if I change my mood, mind down the mood, if I change my mind down the road to post a video, that video will be on my main channel. But going forward, especially starting in November, I'm not. And yes, I realize I'm losing a lot of subscribers on that channel. I get it. I see it. You know, it's sad. It makes me really sad. I worked very hard on that channel. I love that channel. You know, it makes me sad that I'm disappointing people. 
I know people don't understand, you know, me not getting on there and talking about all this and defending myself, but I think the one thing that people forget is that if I do, there's 10 more videos that come out. And so it just never ends, right? Well, I have a choice on whether or not I put fuel on that fire. I don't have a choice on what other people do, but I have a choice on how I react and how I respond. And today, I'm choosing not to respond to that and take care of myself and move forward. And all of those parties involved, honestly, I mean this. I mean this 100%, okay? I wish them all the best. I hope, I wish, I honestly, I hope they find joy in their lives and it's time for me to move down and walk down the road by myself. That's it, you know? I don't wish them any ill harm because I don't believe in doing that to other people. I wish them all the best. Uh-oh, gas time. So, anyway, um, let's talk about Halloween. Halloween. I watched, um, well, I was going to turn on the original Halloween tonight, which I did. And, uh, I was going to say Charmed. Um, what's that show called? Shoot. Why can't I, The Craft. The Craft was on, I think, Freeform. And, um. I love that movie. I used to love. I used to watch that movie so much back in the day with uh, Feruza Balk. Did you guys ever see that movie? Oh my god! I talked about that movie on here not too long ago because there's a line from it that I always use it when like explaining like I feel like how my higher power. For example, all this shit that I just talked about works in my life. And there's a part where they're asking that the girl that's like a natural witch or whatever, they're like, well, what powers do you have? And she's like, well, sometimes it doesn't work the way that I want it to. And they're like, what do you mean? And she's like, like, sometimes I'll ask for a rainstorm and like a pipe will break. And I feel like often that's how God works in my life for me, like how my higher power works, is that, you know, I ask for something to come to me, but it doesn't necessarily come the way that I would have desired for it to, if that makes sense, you know? Sometimes it, I go through some hardships. Sometimes I have a lot of learning experiences that I have to go through before I really get what it is I'm asking for, you know? Um, and I talked about this on here not too long ago. It's like, maybe you ask for financial security. And, and, or you ask for not to have money problems or whatever, right? And then all of a sudden you get another bill and you're like, oh my God, which means you stop going out to eat like twice a week. But over time, what you learn from that, I gave a different, I gave a different example last time. I don't know. I think I was talking about shopping. But what you realize over time is that maybe you don't need to go out to dinner as much as you did, right? And if you don't, then you have the money to pay this bill. So ultimately, the lesson that you learn through all of that, right, is how to save money. Because you have more money after pulling in the reins and not going out to dinner as much than you would have had somebody just handed you money. You would never have learned that lesson. And I think for me in my life, my higher power allows me to learn lessons. Yes, sometimes there is, you know, something really great and positive that comes at the end of it. Sometimes it's just a lesson. Um, you know, and at the end of my life, if I find out there's nothing, well, then I've learned, I've applied a lot of lessons and I've learned a lot through just the shit that I've happened in my life that I've made that stuff up about. And so it's been good for me, you know? And, um, you know, just in the last six weeks, it's made me really realize what, like, having relation, true relationships with people in my physical life that I can touch, you know, and getting back to those and, uh, realizing like with starting the review channel, you know, has been really good for me at the same time with all this stuff, because it's reignited my passion of what, I mean, Tanya tonight in the car, when we were on our way home. She said to me, she said, I feel like this review channel, when I watch those videos, feels like how you were at the beginning when you were doing drama. She was like, you seem so excited, so happy about doing those videos. And I feel that way. And so, in a way, that, with taking some time off of doing drama videos, has kind of made me realize, like, how I started doing the drama videos, if that makes sense. And so, you know, all of it, like, with that, I've learned a lot through. You know, I've learned to prioritize in my life and what's really important, I think. And, um, and I've gotten a lot of humility through it. 
Um, I've learned that I, my words carry a lot of weight and I need to be careful of how I speak to others. Um, you know, I've learned that the way that I judge a, a friendship is not necessarily the way that somebody else judges a friendship or a relationship. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that I go, well, I'm never going to engage in a friendship again. That doesn't mean that at all, you know? I've learned that I don't have to walk away from situations angry, you know? I've learned a lot in the last month, you know? I've learned that... I've just, I've learned a lot. And so, for me, you know, that's the pipe breaking instead of the thunderstorm. And, you know, it's like with my mom's death, I learned a lot. I didn't want to learn it that way. I mean, I, I knew life was short. You know, I say that a lot in my videos, like life is really short. Like, I'm not stupid, I knew life was short, right? Because you wake up one day, and I was 36 when my mom passed away. Was I, I, I was gonna be 36, I was 35 when my mom passed away, you know? And, um, it's like, I knew that life was short because you wake up one day and it's like, you, you say to yourself when you're like 16 or 17, like, oh my God, I'll never be 36, you know? And then you wake up and all of a sudden, you know, you're 35 and you're standing over your mom and she's gone, right? And you're like, what the, how did I get here? Like, how did I get to this place? So I knew, you know, that life was short, but there, it doesn't feel short a lot of times, does it? I mean, like, when we're on vacation, sometimes the vacation seems short, but the planning for it seems long. You know, this year has seemed really long to me, but it also at times seems very quick. You know, it feels like it was just yesterday, like I said, that I was driving around talking about the end of the year. There are moments that feel fast and there are moments that feel slow. You know, but overall, I think part of what, I think it's a nostalgic view to say that life is short because by the time that we get to the point where we realize that life is short, life is half over. That's really the reality. And I think most, that's why you mostly hear from people that are older that life is short. Because by the time that you figured out how short life really feels, you're already halfway done. If, you, if you're lucky enough to make it there, you know? And, um, but I really got it when my mom was gone. You know, like, to have, like, a major loss like that in my life, I really understood it. You know, when people say, chase your dreams because you don't know, like, how long you're going to be here, I really got it. Because I looked at my mother's life, which was now completely over, and so many of these dreams that I honestly, even in my head, still thought to myself, well, she'll do this someday. You know, she'll, you know, finish her book, or she'll do this, or she'll do community theater, or whatever. Like, I really thought those things would happen someday, and they never did. You know, and fear kept her stuck. Fear from the unknown or, you know, fear of whatever kept her from doing those things. And so she never did them. And um, I realized, wow, if there are things that I want to do in my life, and it didn't happen overnight. Like, I mean, you know, my mom died in 2008. I didn't write my book and, and publish it until 2014. I didn't start YouTube until 2016. I mean, it's so weird to me because I post so much and I'm on all this stuff so often. But, like, I've only been on YouTube for two years. Like, that's crazy to me, you know? Two years and uh, September 1st was really... Well, I started my BookTube channel in uh, May. So, this upcoming May will be three years. I mean, it's not a long time on YouTube, you know? For, oh my God, so much stuff to happen. I had a whole life, you know, of stuff before I ever got on video and it's crazy, you know, but, um, I don't regret any of it. I love it, you know, and it's been a learning experience for me too. It honestly has, you know, it's been a, like a really good learning experience for me, not just on YouTube, but in, like, allowing things to bother me or, you know, why I'm holding on to some things other than other, you know, more than others. And I think that's why you see, like, YouTubers that have been around for, like, 8, 10, 12 years, well, 10 years, 11. I mean, how long has YouTube been around? 12 years, 10 years, something like that? You know, you see those people, like, they handle things. Some of them handle, I think, you know, some things a lot better than others because they've been dealing with it for so damn long. I mean, once you've been dealing with it for a while, you know, it makes it a little bit easier. But, um... 
you know, when my mom passed away, I learned so many valuable lessons and I was forced to learn those lessons. Lessons that I were pretty obvious things. You know, that I knew that life is short and life is fragile and chase your dreams and you only have one life and this is not a dress rehearsal. I knew those things. I'd heard them all my life. Those were things that my mother always used to say. But until she died, and I know that I knew that her life was completed. The book, the book end was there. Until I knew that, I didn't really get it, you know. And even then, it was kind of like a slow process. I mean, I remember leaving that hospital room, and there were some things, like I said last night, like I was profoundly changed leaving that hospital room that night. I remember leaving that hospital room and getting in my car, and I remember driving home and listening to uh, Bob Dylan that night on the way home, you know. And I, I. I remember crying a little bit, but I also remember being very still. And um, I think if there's one thing that we know about me, I'm not a real still person. And I was very still that night, you know? And um, I think what changed in me that I never had gotten before, like when I talked about how like I left the room and I was a changed person, what I realized was the finality of life that I had never understood that before because even though I had had people that had passed away in my life like my grandma and you know my grandma and grandpa on my dad's side and other people like I'd had a couple friends that had passed away and you know my friend's mother from suicide they were all people that were like kind of you know at least two like two spaces away from me they weren't people that I you know interacted with literally on a daily basis and I think a lot of them that happened when I was younger like my grandparents and my uh, my my grandmother on my mom's side and my grandparents on my other side I think you know I was too young to really understand it, and it seemed like so, I mean, they were so old, and I was so, you know, like, my grandma wasn't too old. She, my mom's mom, she was 60, 67 when she passed away. My mom was 64. But I think as a child, or even a little bit older than that, like, it seemed so far removed from me at that age, because they were so much older that I didn't really see it. Well, when you're standing over your mom, and you're the age that you remember her being when her mother passed away. My mother was the same age. I think I, I figured this out one day. She was like the same age that I was when her mom passed away. Like she was the same age that I was. Like, okay, so we both were going through this. And I remember when I figured that out, and it was like it was very strange for me because I could remember my mom at that age, and then all of a sudden I'm that age, even though I don't really feel that age inside. If that makes sense, like yes, I've done this, I've done that, I've had this career, I lived here, I've dated these people. But, you know, at the same time, it was like, you know, my I, I saw this picture of my mom as a mom, you know, like a very adult mom in my head, you know, and that I had always looked up to. And I think, you know, that's what I took that night when I looked down at her was like, it's gone, all of it, you know, the dreams, the, it's the finality of life. I really understood it in that moment. And in a way that I had never understood it before. Um, and I think that's the thing, like my cousin, when her, when my aunt died, I remember we were standing like in the garage. So I went over there and then like we walked out of the room uh, for a second, we went in the garage and I said like, are you okay? And she's like, it's surreal. And I said, that's what everybody says the first time you lose a parent. And she's like, it is like, you can't even explain it to somebody else until they've gone through it. And you really, you can't, you, you honest to God, you can't explain it to somebody until they've gone through it. Because it's that mixture of, like, you're never going to talk to this person again that you've talked to, like, most of your life. And I'm talking about people that have, I think, you know, um, pretty okay relationships with their uh, their family members or parents, you know? I mean, I know people that are estranged from their parents, but um, it's like you're never going to talk to this person again. And then at the same time, it's like the finality piece of it. And you get it. And then you get it in reference to your life as well. Like, it really makes sense in reference to your life. Because then the feeling is I'm next. And if I'm next, then I have to ask myself, well, what do I want to do with my life? You know? Um, with the time that I'm given. And that's why I say on a regular basis, you know, remain teachable, remain open. You know, I want to be the best version of myself because I do. Because those, I mean, 
I want to continue to grow so that my experiences, it is so hot, you guys, in this car. I don't know why. Um, the heat is not on. Okay, I was checking on the heat and I turned the camera off. But, um, you know, that's why I say remain teachable a lot is because I want to have the best life possible. I want to continue to grow, you know, emotionally. I want to learn lessons in my life. I want to, you know, I, I want to stay open to those experiences because if I have experiences that I learn from in my life, my life is only enriched by that, right? It's when I choose to ignore those lessons. It's when I choose to say, oh, no, I'm not going to address that or I'm not going to, you know, personally address it or I'm not going to do inventory over this or I'm not going to call my sponsor or, you know, whatever. Like, and I'm just like, oh, out of sight, out of mind. When I do that, you know, it's like when I refuse to really take a look at who I am, then I'm not learning the lessons in my life. There is like no ice or anything in my little to-go cup from Applebee's. This is not a rodeo, you know, like, you only get, well, this is not my first time at the rodeo. You know, this is just, what have I tried to say? This is not a dress rehearsal, okay? You know, like, I know that. Hell, I'm lucky that I'm even here after the using that I did in my life. You know, that the devastation that I did to my own life, you know, I'm lucky that I'm even here or I'm blessed that I'm even here. And cause I don't believe a whole lot in luck, like I said. And if I feel that way and I've gone through all this shit, it's like, you know, that's where a lot of this wanting to grow as a person comes from. Cause I do like, I want to be, I mean, don't you, or is that scary to those of you out there? Are there those of you out there that are like scared to be open to the lessons and things? This guy has like one headlight and it's driving real strange out here. Um, I thought it was gonna be like a really old car when it came around, but it was like a Mitsubishi minivan or uh, like, I don't know what do you call that? SUV, it was pretty. Anyway, um, I don't know. I think once you strap yourself in, <laughs> literally, I think once you strap yourself in and you realize that, you know, like I said this last night and a couple of people were like, thank you so much for saying that. Like, I really needed to hear that where I say, you're going to be okay. Like, you're going to be okay, you know? Um, in the Haunting of Hill House, there's a part where one of the brothers is in treatment. And he's like, in the treatment program that he's in, actually, there's a lot of similarities to the treatment program that I went through. Um, and the room that he's in is like these bunk beds, except for that it was just like me. Like there were two sets of bunk beds and I was like on one side and the other guy was on the other side. So there's only like two of us in there, but, um, like at the time that I thought, I mean, how am I going to get through this? You know, I just can't, um, Mitsubishi Outlander Sport is what it is. Pretty car. Um, I can remember thinking to myself, you know, like, I'm never going to make it through this. And then what happens when I get out of here, you know? And instead of just living in each day, which I think is a real trick to getting to okay, I mean, getting to the point of being okay is really about putting one foot in front of the other and taking one day at a time in whatever you're in. That doesn't have to be a recovery thing in life, you know? If you're one of those people that hears me say you're going to be okay and you don't feel okay today, you just have to take today, just today, and get through today. That's it. And I really, I mean, you don't sit in a treatment program and hear over and over and over and over and over and over again, just for today, just for today, just for today, you know? And, um, keeps you focused and present in that without you kind of getting it at some point and realizing, okay, I guess I'll just stay in today, you know? And, um, you know, and as you get some sobriety, you can obviously plan in, for the future and today, but you know, not to live in tomorrow or live in the past, I think it's important. I mean, there's a great recovery saying that's like, when I keep one, one foot in yesterday and one foot in tomorrow, I shit all over the place or I shit all over today. And I think that it's like an important saying, you know, to remember that like, it's, it's not healthy for me to live in the past and it's not healthy for me to live in the future. I have to live in today. And, um, but I'm watching this, you know, and oh, I wanted to say this. If you're trying to want to, if you're somebody that sits there and hears me say, you're going to be okay. 
and yet you don't feel that to be true for yourself right now, just get through today. Just put one foot in front of the other for today. This is all you have to get through. Tomorrow we'll deal with tomorrow, you know, and um, you, you can make it through one day. We can all make it through one day and then start over tomorrow, you know, and slowly things do get better. They really do, you know, this too shall pass. It was, God, this guy said this in my meeting tonight, he said something to the effect of like, he was given this coin, and I've seen these coins before too, these are not like, these are not 12-step uh, sanctioned coins, they're like treatment coins, but he said, you know, on one side of it, it said, and this, he was, this, this coin changed everything for me when I was given it, he must have been given it in a treatment center, but he said on one side, it says, to thine own self be true. And then he said he turned it over on the other side and said, this too shall pass. And you know, both of those statements are so powerful to me. It doesn't say we know when. It doesn't say it's going to happen next week or on Friday or whatever. It could be three months from now. It could be three years from now. But this too shall pass at some point. You know, whatever we're going through in our life that's difficult. And I think it's not only that. I'm going to sneeze again. Um, don't you hate those fake sneezes? God, I would have rather just sneezed. Anyway... <laughs> But I think that it's also about, um, God, every time I go through the sneezing thing, I kind of forget what I was talking about. Um, I guess sneezes are like the, the true mind eraser. Um, God, I really did just kind of forget what I was talking about. This too shall pass. Oh, I know what I was saying. That, you know, I think like, if it doesn't, at least I think our, what changes is our perspective or the way that we look at a situation, you know, over time. It's like, in the 12 years that I was being bullied growing up, there were times it got worse, there were times that it got easier. But it didn't pass until I graduated from high school. And it even carried over into adulthood. I mean, there were still places that would surprise you, like I shared this on here before, in gas stations and stuff that, I mean, I get it on my YouTube videos all the time. Man, when you opened your mouth, I was surprised. You're not manly at all. You're not masculine at all. I mean, I get it literally all the time, right? And I mean, it doesn't really have much power over me anymore. I'm just like, hey, it's who I am. Sorry you're missing out on that. But, um, you know, there was a time that, like, and that was, that's the least of, like, the bullying that I went through. But it didn't pass. It didn't, I can't remember weeks on end where I went to school and somebody wasn't being cruel to me, right? But what happened over time was that my perspective changed. I became more immune to it. So some, to some degree, the intensity of it did pass. It was different than it had been before. And I don't know that I think that's always a healthy thing, but this too shall pass, you know? It was really important for me to hear those two things tonight, you know, that I forget sometimes. I know self be, to thine own self be true, and this too shall pass. And you're going to be okay, you know, whatever it is you're going through. You don't even have to tell me what it is you're going through. You don't have to tell anybody. It's the truth. We're going to be okay. You know, my old sponsor used to say to me, every day that I get up and I'm six feet above ground is a good day. If I'm breathing, it's a good day. I got a chance today. We're all going to be okay. And then once we realize that, it's about finding the joys in life, the small joys, the big joys, the family, the friends, making a new friend, you know, finding something new that you love to like maybe read or watch movies or whatever. It's like, you know, and then we like open our capacity for living, you know, we learn to be more empathetic and sympathetic towards others. Um, grow as people through the things that we go through. It's inevitable. It, it, if you go through stuff in life, you know, like I did a, the video I did today, which was called, are you valuable was about acceptance. And I've always said, whenever this topic comes up in a meeting, I've always said, I've never understood that question. Like, you know, what's the alternative? Like that. I'm just not going to accept that this stuff is happening in my life. I'm just, I, I, I refuse to accept this. Right. And, like, for my first year or two, my sponsor had me read, well, my second sponsor that I got, he had me read, um, Out of Acceptance in the, my, <laughs> I almost called it what it is, out of my 12-step text. Um, the reason 
reason I don't say that stuff is out of protection for the program and uh, the traditions. But um, there's a part on acceptance in there, and it says acceptance is the answer to all of my problems today. And then it goes on to explain that nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Okay? Well, I believe that to be true today with my higher power and what I believe my higher power to be. Now, I don't mean every finite, minute detail of the world, but I do believe that things that happen in my life don't happen by mistake. What's hard about that is, and I know this is where even very close friends of mine say, I just do not believe this was a work of God. And I get that, you know? I, I really do understand that, but for me, it's like that moment in Steel Magnolias, you know, when uh, Daryl Hannah says something to Sally Field about, you know, she's in God's hands now or something, and Sally Field goes crazy. I mean, like, I understand that people, like, I mean, it's hard for me when I look at really some true sadness in the world to think that God's got a hand in that or my higher power's got a hand in that. I don't know. I don't know how the world works. I don't know. But I know from my own life, I've tried to stop questioning it. And when I'm going through some really horrible shit in my life, I have to take a look at that, number one, and say, look up and say thank you because I'm about to learn a very valuable lesson. And number two, I have to remember that acceptance is the answer to all of my problems today. You know, that. When I look at that thing in my life and I think, okay, I don't know what, I don't know when, I don't know how, but at some point, this will serve a purpose in my life and I will have learned something very valuable through it. It seems to help me get through that thing a little bit easier. You know? Is there some blaming of my higher power? Sure. Was I angry at my higher power when my mom passed away? Absolutely. And then the anger dissipated because I realized it was irrational for me at least, you know. But then, like with my aunt and my uncle, I wasn't angry because I understood it, you know. I understood that it's all part of it. But I think that what's hard for us with that is like when it's like, you know, children that things happen to or, you know, um, good, really good people, you know, and then it's like, well, why did this happen? Well, I don't know. You know, it's like, I remember, um, like with the woman that I was, I was sharing this story on here. Like this is, this is actually a really good lesson or this is a really good example of this. The Oprah, and this is on her aha moments. Um, the woman that was married to the cop and she was divorced and she lived in the home. She had four kids and she and her friend came and or her friend came and they were walking in the morning. She was like a vet, like a, a veterinarian and they were walking. And when she came back, her front door of her house was open and she walked inside and her husband had killed all four children and then shot himself. And, um, when you saw her on the show, like she had been on the show twice, and the first time she came on to tell her story, and she was literally just a shell of a person. And even kind of the second time, she was just like a shell of a person. But this woman came on the second time, and this was the aha moment that she had. And she's so, like, she's like, bawling her eyes out and all this kind of stuff while she's telling the story. I mean, you're so, like, it's so hard to sit there and not be moved watching this. And she says, you know, like, I was sitting at home and I was making a scrapbook for my kids while I was watching your show because I was going to take my own life. And she said, but when I saw you tell your story, I realized I don't have to. Like, I can live for my kids. Right? Okay. Well, that's one thing, a small positive thing that came out. And Oprah says on that show, she says, whenever I'm doing a show, I don't know who, I don't know where, but somebody out there, is, their life is forever changed by what I'm talking about at that moment. Like somebody out there, right? Somebody out there that was going to take their life, that watched this woman lose her kids and then realized... I don't have to. I can live for my kids. That's pretty That's pretty powerful, you know? And I think that's turning our wounds into wisdom. And that's learning from that stuff. And that's realizing that acceptance is the answer to all of my problems today. That, you know, whatever we're going through, you know. And then when I start looking at that kind of stuff, and I think, well, shit, my stuff's nothing in comparison to that, right? 
like, man, that's some real stuff. Let's just be for real, you know? There's a uh, monologue in The Haunting of Hill House that this guy deserves, honestly, like an Oscar for. It's so powerful. It's this blind guy in a 12-step meeting, and he's talking about um, a tour of service, and this that they find this girl that was burned. And it is such a powerful scene, and yet... So, like, I've seen, I've, I've heard stories so similar to that before that people have shared in meetings. I mean, it's so accurate to what you hear, you know? And you hear that stuff, or I hear that stuff, and I think to myself, my God, like, I have no problems. Like, I mean, nothing of mine rivals against that. I lost a mom in a hospital bed that died of a disease, you know what I mean? Like, okay, she died young. That's sad, but she had a great life, you know? My aunt had a wonderful life. My uncle had a great life, you know? I've had a great life. My husband has. I mean, we have a great life together. Our families have great lives, you know? Yes, some sad stuff has happened. I've lost some friendships. Some shit's gone down on social media. You lost four kids. Let's put it in perspective, okay? And then from that comes gratitude. I talked about that in my purisms video, which is not yet posted <laughs> as well today. Um, but, you know, from there comes gratitude. And I don't know, you know, we all... I'm so grateful for my life. I'm so grateful for it, you know? And so, on the days that aren't as great as others, I just put one foot in front of the other and I remember what I learned 23 years ago in 10 months, you know? One day at a time, this too shall pass. And then I affirm the positive and I say things like, you know, um, I'm gonna be happy all day today. And I mean, it's hard not to be happy when you tell yourself over and over and over you're gonna be happy all day today because sometimes it's so damn corny. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna be happy today. You tell yourself that over and over and over and it's kind of hard to be pissed off, honestly. It really is. <laughs> In the moment that you're really pissed off or somebody has really angered you, especially if it's something like road rage or somebody stepped in line of you or took a parking space, if it's something that's, you know, really has no weight to it, I, we know that those things are not things to really get upset about in the world, right? Like, at least I, I hope that we do. But we do. We get shitty about those things, right? In that moment, tell yourself, like, say it's sing-songy, like, I'm going to be happy today. And then, like, let me know how that works for you because it's real hard to stay pissed off when you're singing that to yourself in your head. It really is. <laughs> my mom, I don't know why this reminded me of that, but my mom back in the day, because she loved to sing so much, she would like, if we were, if I was like studying for a test or something and I had to remember like, I don't know, some sentence or something, right? She would take like the first letter of each sentence. So if it was like, I can't even think of something like, you know, walking the dog, my mother would say, walking the dog, wag, W-A-G. And like, she would say, okay, like, that's how you're gonna remember it, wag. And I'd be like, I can't even remember what wag stands for, mom, let alone that song. Like, I'm gonna be singing a different song. I'll be sitting like, <laughs> swing set. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't even remember this song and she wanted me to, and this was like, I was adjusting the camera, singing wag. Oh, my battery's off. But anyway, oh, I was gonna tell a story. What was the story I was gonna tell? Now I don't even remember it. Shoot, I'm pulling up my ear to remember and I can't remember what it was. Oh, okay, so my mom, when I was in high school, she had this friend of hers that came to visit, right? And um, so she stayed with us for like two weeks. And I remember like my mom would always try to act like when she was in college at Indiana University that she was like real studious and stuff. And so we were talking about it one night and I was like, well, my mom used to talk about study groups and stuff. And she was like, your mom? And I was like, yeah, if this camera dies before I finish telling my story, I'm gonna be so pissed. And she was like, no, she was like, your mom mom and I were in this class together. I don't know, it was some huge class in a lecture hall. She said, your mom would little, literally stumble in like five minutes late and um, she would have like a trench coat on over her pajamas and she would come in and immediately put her head down on the desk and fall asleep during the whole class. 
<laughs> she just wanted to be there for attendance. I'm like, oh my God. Now that wasn't me. I, I was like, when I wake up, I'm up. So, you know, when I was in school during the school days, I was like up for all that. I just had no clue what was going on in class and I was too busy writing notes to my good Judy's that I didn't really care. So, okay, the battery's gonna end. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Halloween. Do something real Halloween-y today. Halloween movies are all over TV. Watch one on Netflix, watch something scary. Do something for Halloween tomorrow. Christmas starts. If you didn't know that, then you should go watch my rant video on my Peter Mon channel. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.